Greetings. Uh, let us talk about Barrett's esophagus and what you need to find out uh, about Barrett's esophagus. Uh, here is a lady uh, who has been having acid reflux for a long time. Uh, she also has a family history of Barrett's esophagus and she has been a heavy smoker. Typically, uh, Barrett's esophagus is seen in a male uh, in their 50s who are also obese and heavy smokers and drinkers and especially with white males. So that's the typical picture but sometimes Barrett's esophagus could also be seen in others. Uh, as you can see here uh, on the endoscopy image there is a little bit of a pink uh, area and there's a lot of a beefy red area. The beefy red area on the right side of the screen is what we call Barrett's esophagus. Let us understand a little more about uh, what it is uh, that you see when you do an endoscopy. So as the endoscope goes through the upper esophageal sphincter, and down into the esophagus, you see a pink lining. And uh, sometimes you uh, see this uh, squamo-columnar junction uh, coming a little bit higher than where it should be. Uh, you identify squamo-columnar junction by the junction between the nice pink squamous lining of the esophagus joining the beefy red columnar lining of the stomach. So that is marked by the red arrow here. That is the squamo-columnar junction. As you go down, uh, you have another finding here. Uh, that is the gastroesophageal junction. Uh, gastroesophageal junction is the junction between the mucosal folds of the stomach or the gastric uh, gastric region. The stomach is also called gastrum. So gastroesophageal junction is the junction between the stomach uh, that has the rugal folds and the tubular esophagus. So we talked about squamo-columnar junction uh, that is talking about the inner lining of uh, the junction between the inner lining of the esophagus and the inner lining of the stomach. Gastroesophageal junction is the junction between the tubular portion of the esophagus ending with the folds of the stomach. And then as you go down, uh, you have uh, movements of the diaphragm. So as the patient breathes, uh, the diaphragm uh, contracts and as it contracts, it pinches on the uh, structure that is going through that opening. So that is the diaphragmatic hiatus. We know that the esophagus has to go down the chest, go through the opening in the diaphragm, enter the abdominal cavity before it joins the stomach. So wherever uh, that diaphragm pinches, that is what we call diaphragmatic hiatus. So we heard about three important uh, terms. Squamo-columnar junction, sometimes is also referred to as Z-line, Z for zebra, gastroesophageal junction, and diaphragmatic hiatus. So what do these uh, different uh, structures or changes uh, that we see in the endoscopy uh, that help us define the anatomy, especially in a patient with acid reflux. So this is hiatal hernia. As you can see here, the stomach has protruded up and uh, uh, that has resulted in a hiatal hernia. So we are going to talk about a little more and this is Barrett's esophagus. So this patient has Barrett's esophagus and hiatal hernia. 
I'm going to explain a little further. So, how do we know whether the patient has Barrett's esophagus and hiatal hernia? You need to take some measurements. So, when the endoscopist puts his scope down through the esophagus, uh, he will call out certain numbers and the nurses note them down. And the first thing is if he sees uh, acid reflux changes, he will say top of the erosion is here. Uh, we don't see acid reflux here. We see only Barrett's esophagus and hiatal hernia. So he may call out saying that squamocolumnar junction is located at 34 centimeters from the incisors. That's where you measure, where the scope enters into the uh, mouth at the lips. You measure the marking. So here the scope was at 34 centimeters. Squamocolumnar junction or Z line at 34 centimeters. And as the scope goes down and looks at the top of the gastric folds uh, and measure and take another measurement, uh, gastroesophageal junction is at 37 centimeters. And then as it goes down, uh, you see the diaphragm pinching onto the stomach here because the stomach has prolapsed into the chest and you measure the diaphragmatic hiatus, or some people call it as diaphragmatic pinch. Uh, it is located at 40 centimeters. So we have three measurements here, 34 centimeters, 37 centimeters, and 40 centimeters. So let's look at hiatal hernia. What is the size of the hiatal hernia? It is the difference between 40 minus 37, that is equal to 3 centimeters. So this patient has a 3 centimeter hiatal hernia. Next, as you come up, you measure the uh, length of the Barrett's esophagus. And what's the length of the Barrett's esophagus? It is the difference between 37, that is the top of the gastric folds, to the squamocolumnar junction, that is at 34. 37 minus 34 is equal to 3 centimeters. This patient has a 3 centimeter Barrett's esophagus and also a 3 centimeter hiatal hernia. So uh, for those who do Barrett's endoscopy, they may give a little more detail rather than saying 3 centimeter Barrett's esophagus. They will follow what is called Barrett's esophagus Prague classification. In this classification, you talk about the circumferential extent of the Barrett's esophagus and also the maximum extent of Barrett's esophagus. So how do you come up with these two uh, measurements? So in order to do, do that, we already measure the gastroesophageal junction, 37, squamocolumnar junction at 34, and then you come up to the uh, top of the columnar lining, uh, the Barrett's four, uh, Barrett's uh, uh, top, uh, the top uh, area, and that is a Barrett's tongue at 33 centimeters. So we have now three measurements or actually four measurements. We know about the hiatus at 40 centimeters, gastroesophageal junction at 37 centimeters, squamocolumnar junction at 34 centimeters, and top of the Barrett's tongue at 33 centimeters. So let's talk about the circumferential extent and the maximum extent of Barrett's esophagus according to the Prague classification. So for the circumferential extent, you measure the GE junction at 37 centimeters and measure the squamocolumnar junction at 34 centimeters. And that is three centimeters of circumferential extent of the Barrett's esophagus. It is uh, written as C3. Then we measure, we know the, gastroesophageal junction was at 37, 
and the top of the Barrett's tongue was at 33. That is 4 centimeters of maximum extent or M4. So, so we know what is C3M4. C3 means 3 centimeter circumferential extent of the Barrett's esophagus. M4 means 4 centimeter of maximum extent. So, so now we have heard about Barrett's esophagus. And at this point, patients with acid reflux for a long time may have Barrett's esophagus and hiatal hernia. And uh, as we know, but a lot of times patients with acid reflux do not have any Barrett's esophagus and do not have hiatal hernia. So in this picture, you can see the squamocolumnar junction and the gastroesophageal junction are at the same place. And that is no Barrett's esophagus. There is no columnar lining of the esophagus. And the esophagus has gone through the diaphragmatic hiatus from the chest into the abdomen before it entered the stomach. In other words, there is no hiatal hernia. So there is, this is what we see in majority of the patients with acid reflux. Uh, they don't have Barrett's, they don't have hiatal hernia. In some, you may have a hiatal hernia, but no Barrett's esophagus. As you can see here, the squamocolumnar junction and the, the gastroesophageal junction are at the same place. That is equal to no Barrett's esophagus. But the hiatus uh, is at a lower level. So there is a, a hiatal hernia. So let us talk about uh, how do we develop Barrett's esophagus. You know, you need to have acid reflux. And with acid reflux, there is damage to the squamous lining of the esophagus, which is normal lining. And then the stomach lining replaces the squamous lining. And when the stomach lining replaces, and develops intestinal cells or intestinal metaplasia. That's when we call it as Barrett's esophagus. So when you do endoscopy, uh, Barrett's esophagus is seen as beefy red lining extending into the esophagus. So let us look at some endoscopy images. Here is a, a Barrett's esophagus. So this is squamous lining, and this is columnar lining extending up. And uh, this is about uh, two to three centimeters, and that is known as short segment Barrett's esophagus. Short segment Barrett's esophagus is less than three centimeters. Sometimes the columnar lining can go further up into the esophagus, as you can see, it's come up all the way, and it is about five to six centimeters. And in that case, it is called as long segment Barrett's esophagus, that is more than three centimeters in length. So we talked about short segment Barrett's, long segment Barrett's, less than three, more than three centimeters. So now that you understood about Barrett's esophagus, let's apply this when we do an endoscopy. So, when you do endoscopy, when the endoscopist examines the stomach and then comes back up, uh, he will take some measurements. First, he will talk about diaphragmatic hiatus. Then, he talks about location of GE junction. Then, he talks about the location of the squamocolumnar junction. And then, if there is Barrett's as well, he talks about the top of the Barrett's tongue. So it's important to measure these measurements anytime we do endoscopy so that we can tell the patient whether they have precancerous lining of the esophagus because Barrett's esophagus is a precancerous condition. But you need to keep in mind but that the number of people with Barrett's esophagus that go to cancer is very, very very small. 
So when we see Barrett's esophagus, we do take some biopsies. And let us see how do we take biopsies. We measure the GE junction, and we measure the squamocolumnar junction, and the top of the Barrett's uh, mucosa, and we take the biopsies above the GE junction in the Barrett's esophagus. We take four quadrant biopsies every one to two centimeter in length, uh, depending upon whether the patient has advanced changes of batters or not. If there are advanced changes in the past, we take it at one centimeter intervals. Otherwise, we take it at two centimeter intervals every uh, all different quadrants of the esophagus. So now you know that uh, when you do endoscopy in any patient with batters with the gastroesophageal reflux disease, you need to know whether the patient has esophagitis. We covered that in a previous uh, chapter. Uh, whether the patient has Barrett's esophagus, whether it is a short segment Barrett's esophagus or a long segment Barrett's esophagus. We also talked about whether the patient has a hiatal hernia or not, and the measurements of the hiatal hernia and the Barrett's esophagus, and also try to use the Prague classification. Thank you.